Hello everyone, Ms. Biz here. I've been gone for a while because I have been having a lot of family emergencies. Um, there have been some things that have been happening in my life that have been really major. And I've had to deal with them. And I mean, they've been really major. Sorry about my hair. I just woke up. But there are some things I want to talk about. Because things got to be addressed. Um... I see all this stuff happening in the Black Lives Matter movement. I think it's fantastic. But the problem is, there's a lot of things going on within the black community that's not being addressed. It's not being addressed. And it's upsetting. Um... I'm upset at the fact that black women are being harassed and hurt by black men. Like the video with the guy hitting the girl in the face with the skateboard or the other video with the group of guys throwing the girl in the garbage bin. Like, what is that? That needs to be addressed. How can we talk about being oppressed when and 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 say black lives matter, we're against police brutality, and all of that's good. But how can we talk about that if we are not willing to talk about what we do in our own community? Why do we not talk about mental health? Why do we not talk about just how we eat? About how we treat each other? About how we kill each other? And how we do not deal with what's in our own community? Colorism. I mean, these things have been going on and yes they have been ingrained in us not by us but by years and years of oppression um this might be a little long so hold on to your butts but uh there was a video that I watched and I posted on my Facebook that talked about a system that was made for slaves that would keep them in line and make them believe that they were free when they were not. And basically taught them to whip each other, to tell on each other, to do all these different things to each other for their white masters so they could keep working in the cotton fields and that and so that way they wouldn't run away and those mindsets are still in it today you can see it because of how we treat each other and i think that like, these men have daughters and they treat women like that. These black men have daughters and they treat women like that. But let it be your daughter. Let let it be a, a, a black man treating your daughter like that. You going to have something to say then? You going to have something to say then? Whoever you do that to is somebody's daughter as well. And black women, you treat these men bad, 
but you have a son, let somebody do that to your son. That's somebody else's son. But you got something to say? Really? How you got something to say? If you ain't going to do right by somebody else's son. What happened to common decency? Why? It takes more. We already got enough outside of us. That we got to deal with. Without having to hurt or kill each other. We already have enough outside of us. In this life. That we got to deal with. And then we got to look at each other. As the enemy as well. No. No. That's not okay. That is not okay. And it needs to be addressed. It really needs to be addressed. Sometimes you need to keep your mouth shut and walk away. Sometimes that's the better thing to do. I've done it. And I got a temper. And a mouth. I know I do. I've always had it. But sometimes you need to shut your mouth and walk away. And then we ask our white allies to support us when we don't even support ourselves. We don't support black businesses. We don't support black people. We don't support people in our own communities. None of that. Some do, but a lot don't. So what is it? If you're going to go, go all the way. Go all the way. Support, support black people. Otherwise, you're doing it wrong. Use your voice with your friends. If you see them doing some messed up stuff, check them. Talk to them. Use your reasoning. Let them know that's not how you do black people. That's not how you do your own. White people ain't doing it. Hispanic people ain't doing that. All these other people ain't doing that to each other. So why are you? Why? I, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's frustrating to watch. It's really frustrating to watch because we can do better. We can do so much better. We can, we can, we need to, we've, we need to mobilize and organize. And if, and we, we do have anger. I'm angry. I'm angry about the police brutality. I'm angry about the systemic racism and um, all these white women calling police on black people. Did you know that back in the day during slavery, there was a law enacted specifically for black women so they wouldn't go to jail for beating black children to death. Did you know that? If you don't believe me, look it up. Look it up. There were laws enacted for white women so they wouldn't go to jail because they were beating so many black children to death while they worked in the house. So it's the same thing. It's the same thing. We calling out white people for their stuff. We also need to call out each other for our stuff. 
I ain't got no problem in calling people out, but I ain't got no problem being called out on my stuff neither. If I'm doing some messed up stuff, I expect somebody to call me out, but I'm mature enough for that. I'm mature enough to be called out because I want to be better and I want to do better because that's important. That's how you grow. You need somebody to check you when you're doing wrong. That's how you get better. That's how you succeed. And I want to succeed in everything that I do. And I want everybody around me to succeed in everything that they do. Now you got all these companies saying that they stand with Black Lives Matter, but they have only white people on their board. All white. How are you going to stand with people if you don't understand the plight? If you don't have a point of view of what's really going on and how it actually works. Like, really? You're doing it for the money. I know you are. Black people have the most buying power in the United States. Point blank, period. Look it up. It's statistics. We have the most buying power. So if we stop buying, if we boycott, you lose a lot of money. So they're going to stand with us. Because it's profitable. It's, it's going to be profitable. But how can you say you stand with somebody if you only have white people on, you, on your boards? How are you going to fire people and bring sensitivity training when most of your managers are white? When most of your staff is white? When, mo- when all of your board members and your cabinet members and everybody that are your higher ups are white. How are you going to be able to do that? That doesn't make any sense to me. My suggestion is find some black people to hire. Put them on your board. So that way if something does go down. Guess what? You have a black person to say, hey, that's not how that goes. Because we get it. And not only that, we'd be able to look at it not just from a racial standpoint as being black, but as any other race. So if any other race was being treated badly, they too would reap the benefits. Don't believe me? If you knew what the, well, there was, um, what was it? Martin Luther King signed some stuff. Got some stuff signed by the president at that time. I forget who it was. I know my history. I just don't remember names very well. So excuse me on that. But Martin Luther King got some things signed into law. That helped black people and all people of race, of, of ethnic backgrounds other than white. It also helped the LBGTQ community. So if you don't believe me, look, look all this stuff up, please look it up. Cause it talks about, you know, discrimination of any kind, including gender. It talked about 
all of it. Talked about sexual orientation, all of it. He wanted to help everybody. Men, women, gay or not. Because all of that is in the black community. So when we get a change, everybody benefits from it. When we get the change, everybody else also benefits from it. Just like people who have disabilities, text messaging came from people who were deaf and hard of hearing. Now everybody uses it. When one group of people get something, a lot of people, if not everybody, benefits from it. You see what I'm saying? So we need to come together, black people. We need to come together and change all of this nonsense. We need to change it. We need to do better. We need to. Because we're not going to be taken seriously. We're not going to be taken seriously. We're not going to be taken seriously if we keep hurting each other and our own community. We're not going to be taken seriously. Point blank, period. Do you hear me? I'm sorry. This is... <clears throat> sorry, not sorry. This has been on my head for a really long time on top of everything else. I'm in school right now. I'm taking anatomy and physiology, which is a beast of a class. And taking English. Love my English class because he, my, my professor's a gamer. So I'm like, yeah. But a lot of this stuff has been on my head because I've been watching all this stuff about police brutality, about white women calling on black people. But I've also been seeing stuff about black people hurting other black people. Chicago. I live near Chicago. I live near Chicago. And Chicago had all these shootings and had babies die. Two babies, two kids, 70 people died over the weekend. That's not okay. That is not okay. And it hurts me. I'm not sure what to do about it. I'm not sure. I'm sorry about the shaking, but it really irks me. It upsets me. <clears throat> it angers me. It's always angered me. That my own people think it's okay to hurt each other. Did we run out of candles? Did we get desensitized to it? Has it been has it become something that we tolerate now? Hmm. Hmm. Shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. So I'm just I don't know. I'm just frustrated. This has been a long video. 
if you've come to the end, I appreciate it. But this is something that's been on my heart since um, COVID started. And I want you guys to know that I love you. I still love the black community. Don't get it twisted. I still love my people. Not all, not all cops are bad. Cause a lot of my friends and my dad included was a police officer. And my dad was a great police officer. And my uncle was a police officer. And I have a few friends who are police officers, even now. And um, they're great people. But I've also had dealings with bad police officers. I have. Not all are bad, but not all are good. I've watched police brutality. I've watched, I've dealt with racism. And the microaggressions. Like, if you're going to be a racist, just come out and say you're a racist. If you want to say dumb racist things, like, was it Shane Dawson? Shane Dawson joking about Trayvon Martin, about a child who was murdered just for walking in a neighborhood, doing nothing, just for being black. By a grown man who put his hands on him and because he was losing the fight decided to kill him is not okay. And then his apology, which sounded more like an explanation instead of an apology, I'm done with him. Him and his little friend. His little friends, I should say, because it was more than just him. So, I'm, I'm done with all these people. I'm done with it. I'm done with, I'm sick and tired of the racism. Um, I'm sick and tired of it. It should not be. We're living in a better time. But. If we look at history. It wasn't that long ago. My great grandmother was a slave. My great grandmother. And my grandmother lived through my grandmother and my mother lived through the civil rights movement. So that's how close all this stuff is. We still have a lot of work to do. And there's still Jim Crow going on. If you don't believe me, read the book, The New Jim Crow. Read it. And watch uh, the th uh, 13th on Netflix. It'll give you a little bit of history. It'll tell you some stuff. But that New Jim Crow, oh my gosh, great book. But it'll mess you up. It'll tell you some stuff. So like I said, this was long, but I had to get it off my chest. Um, thank you for listening to the end. If you got this far, I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. Thank you. And I will talk to you guys later, hopefully on a better note. Um, 
I'm probably going to be posting some video on um, my project because I'm going to be addressing some things in the black community when it comes to mental health and the trauma that comes with mental health and the science behind it. So, yeah, this is actually for a project from one of my classes. It's about to get real and it's very near and dear to my heart. So, um, yeah, but I will talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for listening. Love you guys. Deuces.